All right, I think I found the best way to inflate and deflate your tires with a crawler. This is a pretty sweet setup. <laughs> so this past year, I've been ordering and tinkering around with a bunch of different onboard air options, accessories, uh, just different ways to do it because I don't know, I guess I'm just kind of a nerd for that. We've tested out a couple different compressors, uh, changing around air tanks. We've got the uh, ARBs and the YJ now. Well, I decided to pre-order this new piece of equipment from Morflate. It's called uh, the Air Hub, and this thing is cool. Uh, I just watched a couple of videos of it. I'm not going to read the directions. I'm just going to go for it. But really what it does is it automates tire inflation or deflation. So essentially what it does is it just makes it so you can choose a PSI to have your tires at, hit a button, and a couple solenoids in there will let the air pass through until it gets to what you want it to be. So what I'm gonna do today, we're gonna unpackage it. We're gonna test it out a couple different ways, deflating it and inflating the tires again, and just get a good look at how the system works. Picker. really liked the Morflate kits. I've got one right here that I keep in my Jeep, but you'll see that there's one thing that poses a problem with this is that the Morflate already comes with this air chuck and valve. The air hub has these quick disconnects. What's cool though is Morflate sets you up with this kit free of charge to convert your Morflate to be able to run with the air hub. It has these two little brass fittings that we're gonna throw onto these hoses so we can connect and quick disconnect them from the new air hub. Part of this kit actually includes a new quick disconnect coupler for each side of your old manifold so you can still use that. They actually sent me this little note saying, whoops, we kind of ran out of these. We'll ship them out once we get them. Not to worry, I don't really plan on using this. It's gonna be more like a backup in case something happens to the air hub, but all we've got to do is get a 9 16th wrench, take off both of these, throw some new pipe tape on there and then screw these on and that way they can just plug right into these quick disconnects. Let's untangle our hoses here. It's nice to have these hoses split up into two different sides so they don't get all tangled up like they used to. All right, so first thing to do, plug these into the air hub. I'll throw the couplers on. All right, so we're all hooked up. So I, I have it in the ARB coupler right now, just kind of to hold it. It does have this hook on the back so it can hang on to something. I think that's what we're gonna need. So I don't really have a way to, end, to air this out very efficiently. So I'll turn it on, open the slide valve and make sure that there's no air source connected. So we're gonna disconnect it and we'll just hang it on the license plate for now. Shows us at 20.3, which I was shooting for 20 earlier with the original Morphle manifold. And you know, that is the one thing that I don't like about traditional manifold setups is that you have to keep checking it, right? You're gonna check it on your dash if you have a newer vehicle, or you're just gonna check it on the gauge if you had the old Morphlate manifold like I was using before. So didn't get it to exactly 20, whatever, not a big deal. I want to air this down to six. PSI. So let's see how this works. So it's flashing 10. We're going to go to six. It's done flashing. So I'm going to open the valve. We'll see if it does its thing. So it automatically stopped and then started again. And we'll see how long it takes us to get down. So imagine you're out at the trailhead and everybody's going to each tire. Maybe they've got a Ston tire deflator or they've got what I use, which really it's just a valve stem puller and a gauge combined. And they're going around to each tire and then you come up and just hang this thing on the front bumper and plug these in, open that valve, set it to six PSI, walk away. That is pretty dang cool. We'll see how accurate it is here in a minute. I mean, I don't really have a way to test it other than putting my valve stem puller gauge on there and seeing how close we get. Because I was in the, one of the first questions I asked Morflate was, I usually go down below 10. Is this gauge gonna be accurate? And it shows this going from 
Yeah, I think it said it goes down to two PSI. So there it is, it says right on the box, your desired PSI two to 125 PSI. So I'm gonna have to read through this a little bit and figure out, can I use my air tank in there? Or will that just be too powerful to combine with this kit? Cause I think that would be the ultimate setup. If you had an air tank that can put out 150 PSI plus, you know, really fast pressure, combine it with something that's gonna automatically shut off once you get to your desired PSI, I think that would just be pretty much epic as far as airing up, airing down goes. All right, showing sit. There we go. Uh, four minutes, 30 seconds to get down from 20 PSI to six PSI. Here is my old school grip performance valve stem puller. Take this thing off. I mean, the tires do look like I expect for six PSI. This is the process I used to have to go through every time. Screwing this on, start taking the valve stem out. All right, and the gauge is showing, yep, the gauge is showing eight. So if I was to go off of this gauge, I would take it down two more PSI. Plug this back in, I'll try the front tire just to make sure. All right, and this one's showing about the same. So I guess one way we could compensate for that, just air down a little bit lower, set the air hub to five. We'll just have to experiment with it the first couple times until we actually can get it to where we're at. But eight is pretty close, pretty hands off, just kind of hanging back, watching, talking. It's time to air up. Now I've got to get out my handy dandy parking brake. Got the Dana 44s under here right now. And when I put the cage in, it blocks a lot of that parking brake assembly. Planning on getting a handbrake down here eventually, but don't want to even mess with it yet because this is going to be our new rear axle. We're going to have a new parking brake set up with that. This is a Sterling 10 and a quarter long pinion. We're not there yet. We're not ready for it because we're still working on that thing. What I've got to do is start the Jeep up. Look, the air hub in, I've got all four tires connected and we're going to try this running off my twin ARB. So I've actually got a the engine running for that one. Parking brake isn't working. And we rolled over it, dang it. Just lost all my valve stem caps, good golly. Starter. Compressor's on, we've got the Jeep running. Everything's hooked up. We reset my timer here. Right, set desired PSI. Desired PSI is going to be Ooh, we gotta go way lower. We're gonna go to 20. I usually operate around 20 now because this Jeep doesn't weigh too much. All right, connect to the air source, turn on the air source, which it is. We're gonna open the slide valve. Open. All right, got my timer going. We'll see how long this takes using the dual ARV compressor. Kind of just see how the whole system works. How many times it shuts off and on, you know? So far, this is awesome. I'm such a nerd about this. I'm actually really excited to have this as part of my kit. All right, we're getting close. All right, says we're at 20. And time-wise, we're at five minutes, we'll say 30 seconds. So five and a half minutes to air up all four from six PSI to 20, according to the air hub. That's awesome. Let's turn this all off here. Just because I'm curious, we're gonna run another test. I'm gonna do it with a more powerful air source. I think the ARBs are supposed to put out about 150 is where they shut off, but continuous pressure, I think this air tank can do a lot more. So as long as it still has some air in it, I'm gonna do that same test again, except this time we're gonna air it up using the tank. We'll see how long that takes and how the air hub handles it. Like we did before, gonna hang it and go down to, this time we're gonna go down to five and we'll check out the accuracy there. Open the valve and wait. All right. So that's five PSI according to the air hub. I'm gonna check the tires again and see if we're any closer to six now. And I'm not running any bead locks on these wheels, which is why I'm so precise on airing down because I know that six gives me that good ride and traction but it doesn't let the tire come off. Bell stem out. All right, so now we're at about seven and a half. Getting closer. I mean, seven's usually 
enough for most trails, but when I really need that extra traction, I do go down to round six usually. Just to further this experiment and really find out how low we need to set this to get to our, where I want to be, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to try to go down to say, I'm just going to set it at like three this time and we'll see if that gets it to six on this tire gauge. All right. It says we're at three. Real quick, we'll see what we're actually at. Five, just a tad over five. Okay, so it looks like four PSI is what we need to go with, at least in this setup. Maybe when we get to the different elevation, I don't know, maybe that'll play a factor in it. Before we do our first trail run with this, we're for sure gonna test it out, but four is what we're gonna go with right now to get us to six. That's pretty close. For such low pressures, I've never seen anything that can do something like this. All right, last test, just out of curiosity, using the air hub paired up with air tank. So my fitting is upside down on here. Let's open this up. And we'll take it up to 150. So, oh, remembered 20 that time. That's cool. All right, set. Open the valve. We're timing. This, the air tank setups are so crazy because they're quiet. So you can't hear compressor and engine running or anything. It's just, oh man, this setup is really high tech. You can see uh, the air is moving so quick through there. It is freezing over everything. Yeesh. I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not. It's getting real cold real fast. And look at this thing. We're already at 18 PSI. Holy crap. So I just reset it and it's saying 12 PSI. That's weird. Let's try it again. 20. It's saying we're at 20. And then it flashes back to 12.8. Let's see what we're actually at here. 15. I think the cold is, is messing with something because that, at 41 seconds, I mean, it went up quick. It went up about 10 PSI in less than a minute. And then it said, yep, we're at 20. And we definitely were not. This thing is acting really weird now. She's ice cold. I'm gonna try to turn the Jeep on again. We'll air it up and see if that hot air going through there can defrost everything. All right, there we are back at 20. And you can see all that ice is melted off because that air coming out of the compressor, I'm sure is pretty warm. That's it guys, that is the review I've got of the Morflate Air Hub combined with the Morflate Tire Inflator System. I'm loving it. I think this is a huge, tool to have on the trail to really just save you some time and uh you know some peace of mind to know that this thing's managing the air pressure for you you don't have to do all four tires you don't have to worry about you know setting it wrong don't have to worry about multiple gauges you can just use this one i love it i am gonna have to talk with these guys about doing it with the air tank because that thing went quick and I, i'm guessing it was just that cold air froze it over because it shot up to like 12 and then shut off and then I thought it was at 20. Then I went to like 15, did the same thing, and it was definitely frozen. You could see all the lines were frozen up. So I don't know, can you pair it with an air tank? We'll see, maybe there's some strategy there. Put it at a, a lower PSI, something like that. Links to everything down in the description. If you wanna see uh, my ARB install, the air tank build, anything like that, I'll put some of those links down there too. But also check out the YJ build playlist want to see anything on the Jeep. Thanks for checking out this video, guys. See you in the next one.